In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can install Ubuntu server and how to modify things while installing it. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So to install Ubuntu server, first of all, you have to make a bootable USB. You can use Rufus software or you can use Ventoy. So you will download the ISO from here. Since I'm doing it on my Proxmox, which is a hypervisor. So I'm going to just simply create a virtual machine and load the ISO image from the local data store. So since I already have it, but if you don't have it, just simply click on this one or under alternate downloads, wherever you find the ISO link, go to wherever you want to store it and store uh, this ISO image then in ISO images and download from URL. And here you can see I already have it. So I'm not going to download it again. And I'm going to create a virtual machine for this one. And you can give it VM ID, whatever you want. And then the name. So for this specific machine, I'm going to use Docker. So I'm going to give it name Docker. And I'll choose operating system from local where I have it, which is going to be Ubuntu 24. And then under system, I'll just leave it as it is, or whatever the default is. And then I'm going to assign it 100 gigs, uh, which I guess uh, is available in my SSD. And then I'm going to click next. And for the socket, I'm going to use two. And uh, so total of 10 virtual cores. And the memory I will assign is going to be this, which is 32 gigs. And network is going to be LAN. And confirm start after created. So I'll show you every step in this video. And what we can modify, even the IP address, the disk, and all what we can do while installation. Because the installation process is very straightforward. There is actually nothing to show if I just have to go and click next, next, next or select just whatever is available. So that's just simply you just move forward with whatever the instructions are. But uh, what I wanted to show you is the modification. All right, so it's already loaded from the ISO image and it's starting all the services. Once the installer is here, I will show you how we're going to do that. Okay, first thing, first page, if you want to choose any other language, you can choose that. But for me, English is fine. So I'll just hit enter on English US. The second thing is going to ask you for the installer. So it says a uh, version, this, this, this new installer is available. And you are currently running an older version, which is 2404.2. Do you want to update to the new installer? I would say continue without updating. Because we can do that in uh, while we are uh, in the machine itself. But if you want to update to the latest one, just select this one. Update to the new installer. So it will update and it will take a little bit more time. But I'm saving the time and I'm continuing, continuing with this one. And then here it's asking for your keyboard layout. If you want to use any other keyboard than English, you can select it here can see there are like so many layouts but you have to have the same kind of keyboard as well so i'm just leaving it on english and i'm gonna hit done on that one okay so now it's asking for choose the installation we are going to install ubuntu server so that's why we're keeping check on this one and it says it's going to be the default full version of ubuntu but if you want the minimal version of where you have to install whatever service you need. So let's say with the Ubuntu server, we get the SSH service, we get the, let's say, curl, we get the zip service. With the minimal one, it will be just the kernel and you'll have to install every single service, whatever you want. Let's say you have to download something from GitHub, then you will need to type the command apt install git. It won't be available in Ubuntu server by default, but that will reduce the size of your operating system as well. And the third one is going to be search for third party drivers. If you have to uh, like install any other drivers, if your server is like carrying, let's say graphic card or anything else, 
which you think is not going to be available by default, then you can search for a third third party drivers as well. So for me, since I don't have anything, but if you have anything else, you can scroll and find out whatever you need. It's, it's not a big deal. It's like pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, next thing, which is like a little bit confusing for most of the people I have seen, they were like, oh, I don't know how to set static IP address while installing. They can do it if it's installed, but let me show you. So, okay, one more time. So you have to go to where it shows the name. For me, it's showing ENS18 ETH. You hit enter on that one, and then you hit enter on IPv4. And here it shows IPv4 method, which is already selected to automatic. So we have to change it to static or manual. So as I hit enter on manual, it's going to show me this list. So now it's saying the subnet. What is actually the subnet? People, what, what they do, they type the subnet mask. It's not the subnet. It's asking uh, for the subnet you're going to use. For me, it's going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 8. This is the subnet I'm going to use. For the address I'm going to use is 10.0.0.21. And then it's asking for the gateway. This is my gateway. And then for the name servers, if you have one, you can choose those or otherwise you can uh, use Google DNS. I normally use Google DNS, even though I have my own DNS, but uh, I always prefer using the cloud one. And search domains, if you want to set any, but if you leave it as it is, that's fine too. But if you have a domain, let's say, uh, your company name.com you can set it here and then after the installation you can set all the preferences you want to set and then hit save so now it's set on manual and we will check that if it should work because we set up all the information correctly the gateway and the subnet so the subnet portion was like uh i've been like always confusing for like multiple people i have seen they, they always try to type the subnet mask. It's not the subnet mask. Subnet mask is something else. It's the subnet, the subnet of your network. Okay, and then you hit on, hit enter on done. And then the proxy address, you can leave it as it is because something with the Ubuntu mirrors itself. So it, it gets the mirror address for updating the repository and stuff like that. So hit done and continue. Okay. So here is the second thing. First one is to choose the entire disk or you can choose a custom layout. You have both options. Even if you use the first one, use the entire disk. Since we have 100 gigs, as I, I said 100 gigs on this one. So I'm just going to go on done and I'll show you something here. So you see it says new size will be 48 gigs it should be like 97 gigs which is like the 100 percent storage what i assigned and even here you can see it's already mounted with root which is 48 gigs why i don't understand it but why <laughs> but this is something i really wanted to show you because sometimes when you're installing it in speed you just leave it as it is and then Later on, you figure out, oh, what's going on with the space. Okay, so here you can see even the free space it's showing as well. You have to go to the use devices, hit enter on this one, hit enter on edit, and whatever the full space is, just type that those numbers. So I can see it's 97996, which is now correct. And then I'm going to hit save. Now you can see it's show, it's uh, using all of the space and even on the root directory, it's like 100% used. Okay, and then we're going to hit enter on done. But let me show you the other option as well. So in the custom storage, you have to create everything manually. So you will just see the free space. So you have to create partition. You have to mount them 
and then you can do the next step. Okay, so on free space, you have to enter and then add a GPT partition and here you will mention the size of your partition. So on the other side, we were using two gigs for boot and 97 gigs for, for EXT and it was mounted as root. So it's going to create the partition and mount is as it is. So if I just type 2.00G and here I can see like different, I can create a swap partition and there is like BTRFS, which is another Linux related file system, but ext4 is the default one for Ubuntu. And here are the other directories. Like if you have, if you want to uh, choose like 200 MBs for boot, you can create uh, like this. So it's going to show you the free space here again. And on the top, you can see it's mounted as boot. And if I create this one as well and give it 99.7. 96G and create the partition. Now you can see uh, we have both partitions, the boot and the root as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit hit enter on back and using the first option, which is use entire disk. And you can see here we have both options like boot and the root mount. And then I'm going to increase the space because we didn't save all the changes. Now it should be good. And for boot, if you want to use even 100 MBs, I would say that's fine. It doesn't make any difference. But by default, it's, it's set to 2 GB. For me, it's fine. But if you need more space on your root, then you can like minimize the space to 100 MB. And that would be perfectly fine. I have used it in previous in my previous server okay and then hit done and it's gonna ask you one more time are you confirmed and then i'm gonna hit enter on continue then it's going to be all the information about your name and uh, your server name and pick a username and choose a password stuff like that okay and then after this information you're gonna hit enter on done and in the next one, it's going to ask you if you want to enable Ubuntu Pro. So that's not free. So I would say just set skip for now and hit enter on continue. But if you are like going to purchase Ubuntu Pro, then definitely you won't be watching my video. <laughs> then you should like you would know a lot about Ubuntu. Okay, and then hit enter on next one. Okay, here uh, I guess it's the second last uh, option it's going to ask you. It's going to be for OpenSSH server. If you want to SSH into this server, then you will need to install this service. Otherwise, it will be like something can work with the console or you can work if you are in the front of the server. So this is suggested. And if you have like your keys already, you can even import your keys here, like using USB or yeah, that's the only option, I guess. And then hit enter on done and here it's going to ask you for more snaps so snaps are like you can consider one click install kind of stuff so we have lxd which is the vm manager what actually i'm using on my proxbox and then there is like more stuff let's say docker it already has docker so you don't have to type the commands in docker you can simply just press spacebar and docker will be installed but I want to do everything like how I want. So that's why I'm going to install Docker with commands. And there's Nextcloud available as well. So you just simply check this one and your Nextcloud will be installed. And if you don't know about Nextcloud, I have another video. I'll put the link in the description as well. You can go check it out. It's an amazing thing for your server. Okay. And then as I hit done, now it's going to start the installation process, which will take like 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so the installation process is completed. When you see a full view, full log or reboot now, that means your server is completely installed. And on the top, you can see here installation complete as well. So I hope you learned something new. While installation, we can also modify things 
uh, like disk and network. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.